Okay. Reich's political point was this. Okay. Reich is Wilhelm Reich, who was somebody who challenged Marxism because he his people were victim of the Nazi regime, right? And he breaks down how it was not very hard for Hitler to hypnotize the culture because they had already been hypnotized by religion and the, the patriarchal. And I'm really tired of the word patriarchy, patriarchal oppression, all these different damn words. I'm so tired of it. But it's just the words we have. It says Reich's political point was this. At this point in history, changing the objective economic social systems alone is not enough. Oppressive behavior, sadistic power relations, co competitive greed to exploit, dominate, and humiliate, and our accommodations to these insults are by now conditioned into the nervous systems of each member of our civilized society. So we want to talk about evolutionary psychology, right? We talk about evolutionary psychology, but it's very important that if we're going to talk about evolutionary psychology, we have to talk about how our mind has been hijacked. We're not evolving in nature. We are evolving in unnatural, in unnatural conditions. There is something called epigenetics, right? Where you can program. See, we're not animals. We are programmable. Animals are programmed. They're set to a certain program. They're not going to veer off that program. We are, we are, uh, um, ye are gods, says Jesus. Ye are gods, right? And because ye are gods, because we are the one of our reality, we have to be very careful of the words that we accept, right? And the information that we allow to be repeatedly put into our minds and in our heads. That's why you need to challenge things like this. That's why you need to question things like this. So you don't get brainwashed. And you need to brainwash yourself. I've spent a long time brainwashing myself. Because I'd rather brainwash myself than have somebody else brainwash me. Have somebody that don't know me, don't care nothing about me, brainwash me. Absolutely not. Okay? So it says... Um, are by now conditioned into the nervous systems, and this is scientific, okay, epigenetics, of each member of our civilized societies. Both oppressors and victims are damaged by the experience that repressive wiring of the nervous system occurs at the most intimate levels of sex and of the spirit. We gonna get we, we going into the spirit. The recreation of the human being must occur on these levels. Also, if we desire a truly human revolution, one that does more than just change the guard, change the mask, change the label. Mm. It says the repression, control, and exploitation of female sexuality is a major tool of patriarchy because it goes hand in hand with the exploitation of female labor left-wing males who see no connection between labor exploitation and sexual exploitation have failed to make a total analysis or in reich's terms they have failed to undergo a total revolution on a neuron level they are still wired for oppression so a book like this Think about men reading a book like this most people who are reading this type of book they bust, i think most of them are men or male-minded women or repressed women they're already repressed they have repressed women that will sit there and, and write the book with them. they have a book called um why women have sex david, dr david bus and a, a a woman researcher evolutionary psychologist and i listen to it based on what i know and all the different perspectives women center respect perspective on top as well as you know the psychology the history and I could boil the thing down. I got halfway through it. I'm just like, I'm like, this book should be called Why Women Consent to Unwanted Sex or Why Women Have Unwanted Consensual Sex. The mental gymnastics that women go through to have unwanted consensual sex, that is what it sounds like for most of the book. Because why women actually have sex is very simple right it's super simple right but why women have uh, why they have they consent to unwanted sex now that's more complex 
Now that takes more explanation. Now it, it has to go into, well, you know, I feel guilty because I feel like it's my duty. And, you know, I had to. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, he worked so hard. What the fuck that got to do with your sexuality? Huh? Because if that has anything to do with your sexuality, now you're exchanging, right? But, 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 like Dr. David Buss said, what did he say? What did he say? He said, um, he said, in the amoral universe of natural and sexual selection, women's bodies and sexual access to their bodies are indispensable assets for men. Indispensable assets for men, right? And it says, in order to keep that indispensable asset, they have to control the woman's sexuality. And what is the cause of most domestic violence? His idea that she's somehow cheating or that he's going to lose her to some other person who he believes is going to control her sexuality. And he wants to be the one to control her sexuality. Why does he want to do that? Right? Why is losing asset access historically to a, a man, why is losing access his, historically could put a man on a road to an evolutionary dead end? Right? If he can't replace her. Why does it do that? Why? Right? It's not just biology. It's not just baby making. It's not just that. It's also about labor. It's also about exploitation of labor. Right? It says, Reich pointed out in the 1930s that the prevalent male sexual fantasy in male-dominated society is one of grape. And he knew that this was not a personal fantasy, but a political one. It says, with political repercussions. He was very clear on how sexual repression of women has been the most powerful patriarchal weapon in creating social victims. Females, you are not even seeing any of what I've been reading this whole time. It's okay. Females who have been weakened, made dependent, fearful, or ashamed of our own bodies and punished for their functions, sexual psychological prey to any predator. Such creatures are easy to exploit politically and economically. People who do not own their own sex cannot own their own labor. Now, I've been working in houses, right? I, I think God has guided me to work in houses, right? I'm in carpentry school right now, right? And I've been in houses for, 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 for some years now doing work and helping people put together furniture, wallpaper, and different things like that. I'm actually making good, great money doing it, right? But it's almost all women. And what I've seen is a lot of women, they're having babies with men. They're working outside the house. And they're doing all the work inside the house. They're doing all the labor I had a wallpaper uh, uh, that I did not too long ago. And I'm good at what I do on my piece now. Now, it was a pregnant woman. Now, they have a three-story house. They're they're making these three-story stick houses now. She's pregnant. Very pregnant. I'm doing the wallpaper for the baby's house. I mean, the baby's room. She walks down a flight of steps to greet me. Right, has to walk back the flight of steps. That's a lot for a pregnant woman, especially as pregnant as she is. That's a lot, just to meet, just to greet me, and bring me and show me what I need to do. Okay, cool. I do what I do. It takes me a few hours because they have a weird kind of wall, and I hear her husband, basically. Well, she's still in here. She's still in here doing wallpaper, and I could tell the energy. I I experienced the hate and ass husband a lot. I've experienced the hate and ass husband a lot. I've I've seen. I mean, they don't even care that somebody in there. They don't give a damn. Okay. Hate and ass husband. Now, nine times out of ten, she had to beg this man 
to allow her to hire someone to do it. Because otherwise she would have had to do it. Right? And I'm doing it. And he complaining because I'm taking a, a while. Well, bitch, maybe you should help. You could help me, bitch. You could help me. What's the problem? If you feel like I'm taking too damn long, why don't you help? Right? And if you think it's too expensive, bitch, you do it. You ain't even have to hire me. But I'm expensive, bitch. I'm not free. Right? So I get to the end of it. And she catching an attitude with me. She catch the attitude with me. Why? Because of the bill. Now, I'm just like, and I, the way I do it, I help save people money, right? The way I do it. But at the same time, it's just like, I had to really think about it. And I think a part of the upset is not because, you know, the price, because the price is the price. Like, that's just what it is. That's how long it took. And that's what it is, right? The issue is, I charge for my time. I charge a good amount for every hour, right? She's big and pregnant. Do you know a surrogate mother is paid a hundred thousand to three hundred thousand dollars to carry a baby? That just to carry the baby. Then she's still doing all the work around the house. Not something that she probably still working. If she's working from home, she probably still bring an income in. I didn't even know the man was there. Till he came over there with attitude and then walk back up so he could watch this game. I didn't even know why this motherfucker didn't meet me at the fucking door. Why he got her walking up the steps, any flights of steps unnecessarily when she big and pregnant like that. That shit was pissing me off. And then she get there to have, there to have attitude with me. Right? Because she's being exploited and I'm not. She know, guess what? I, I when I leave here, I'm, I got my money and I'm gone. I don't have to hear no man telling me shit. It's very threatening. This is why they gaslight with this lesbian stuff. This is why they gaslight with that lesbian stuff, right? Because because I'm in empowered. I'm empowered. I'm not in bondage. Right? Ain't nobody ain't nobody telling me what to do and where to be and where to go. <laughs> literally if i if somebody catch any kind of attitude any client ca- catch a little bit of attitude cancel cancel i'm not nah i'm not dealing with it i don't need to i don't have to right i'm not dealing with my next husband that's not mine <laughs> i have literally walked off i was like well you know what i i don't need to deal with this i got plenty of people and i got plenty of work i, I don't need this I don't. I be wanting to tell this one. I'm like, your husband is trash, baby. Your husband trash. Now they got some people listening to me. They they assuming, yo, oh, she ain't never been around no men. I'm co- I'm always around men. I'm around men more than any other type of person. Unfortunately, <laughs> I understand men. I get it. It's y'all that don't understand men. And they want y'all to not understand me. So they'll sit up there and say, oh, she hate men. She ain't, she ain't had no daddy to raise her. I had a daddy raise me. That's why I talk like this. That's why I have this kind of confidence. When I got out into the world as an adult and realized that this is not how, the, my father is not how fathers most fathers are, then I was like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. Right? Didn't have nothing to do with my sexuality because I've been... I've been who I am, what I am since uh, since since pup now. But y'all some lying ass motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, y'all crazy, okay? And and what's crazy is my dad was like the model of what a lot of men lie to women and pretend like they're going to be in a relationship. Not completely, but he was closer than a lot of these men. I'm talking about he worked, got up, work five o'clock in the morning, was at work before I woke up. He, mom dropped us off, dropped us off school. She uh, had her hair salon. He supported her in her hair salon, right? He was paying all the, the, the major bills, all the money that she was making from the hair salon was going back into the hair salon, Right. Um, he would, when he get off work, he picking us from school, 
picking us up from school. They worked as a team. He picking us up from school. He making us lunch and dinner. I mean, yeah, dinner basically. We had a a a, a, a structured menu. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We eating the same thing, right? I don't remember what we had Monday, but we had different things. I remember that. See, I remember the fast food. Thursday was pizza. Friday was Mickey D's or some kind of fast food. That's what I was excited about. But the other days we had spaghetti on one day. We had uh 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 rice and rice, cream corn, and smoked sausages. Don't ask me. I don't know what the fuck that was, but that's what we had <laughs> every week. And then there was some one other meal. And then that was the rest of the week, right? Structured. Structured. He he was a girl that he taught us how to do stuff. He taught mama how to drive. Taught mama how to cut grass. Taught mama electrical. He wanted her to be independent. He was more of the indigenous, uh, how indigenous people moved, right? And um, he also knew that he was getting sick, right? He knew his mortality, right? A lot of men out here, they, they don't know their mortality. They don't know that t- today or tomorrow you, you could be gone or you can get sick. And all that stuff, that power, that strength that you claim and that makes you such a man that makes you where you're supposed to be the head of the house could be completely gone. And those uh, children and that wife, right, that you either took care of or didn't take care of is now going to have to take care of you. And depending on how you is with them, that's how they're going to be with you. Right? 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 So that's crazy. But even then, my mom told me he was abusive when she was young. Right? And also in a relationship, he cheated. He cheated while I while I was in my mama's womb. Just absolutely disrespectful. Right? So men behave bad. That's just the I mean, they can have so many great qualities and still behave badly because we are in a society that is makes it so hard for men to behave correctly right they make it very hard for men to behave correctly and they also have men in environments where they basically are going to to behave badly People have been talking about the the single family, huh? Uh, uh, the single unit. That's not natural, right? That's not where we come from, right? That is man made and created by the government for for reasons of mass destruction. It was not designed to work well. A man should not be in the house by himself with women and children. Absolutely not. That's crazy. The more I did research, even reading his book. Now, he never going to say the solution is that, you know, men should not be alone with women and children. The women and children are far too vulnerable. But that's that's what the ancient indigenous people, that's what people have known for hundreds and thousands of years. But somehow they but they knew what they was doing. They knew what that was going to create. Right. They knew. So let's see a different society. The spirit of intimacy, intimacy. The natural attraction of two human beings to each other is something that the elders say is actually prompted by spirit. Okay, it's actually prompted by spirit. You can tell I'm tired and I'm thirsty. And spirit brings people together in order to give them the opportunity to grow together. That growth is directly connected to the gifts that two people are capable of providing to the village. And this is why when a couple is in trouble, the whole village is in trouble. Now, if you are in a relationship where the purpose of your relationship is to grow together so you can become a benefit to the village. And when your relationship is in trouble, the whole village is in trouble. Can you see how, can you simply see how the rate of domestic violence would lower instantly? Can you see how the rate of rape, of child abuse, of all these different things would be extremely low between relationships with men and women when there is a group of men that is holding men accountable because them being at odds with each other 
affects the entire village and that is the mindset and that is the reason for why people get together in the first place versus in the amoral universe of natural and sexual selection women's bodies and sexual access to their bodies are indispensable assets for men not indispensable assets for themselves not indispensable assets for the village not indispensable assets for their their children and their lineage but for men it says sexual uh, a successful mate retention requires influencing influencing a partner's underlying psychological machinery versus uh versus intimacy the natural attraction of two human beings to each other is something that the elders say is actually prompted by spirit spirit and spirit brings people together in order to give them the opportunity to grow together not to have successful mate retention not because they need to influence a partner's underlying psychology psychological machinery but because spirit brought them together you see how crazy different that is it says a woman should not expect her husband to take the place of her women friends and take care for her in the same way similarly a man should not expect his wife to take the place of male friends right but when in the amoral universe of a natural and sexual selection women's bodies and sexual access to their bodies are indispensable assets for men they don't want you around anybody that could possibly lead you astray right lead you to some kind of uh higher value man right and so they have to lower your self-esteem they have to make you feel ashamed they have to make you feel ugly and look ugly they have to do all these crazy things because they're not based in spirit they're not grounded in spirit right our society is not grounded in spirit when it's grounded in spirit you're on a totally different paradigm right it says our lives are influenced let's start from the top of that being a woman does not mean you have nothing to do with masculine energy similarly being a man does not mean you have nothing to do with the feminine vaginas and penises are not the only things that define our sexual nature our lives are influenced by the presence within us of both feminine and masculine energy it is important that these energies maintain harmony within us there are things that men do in order to nourish what they call their female self and things that women have to do in order to nourish their male self in the village this is from first-hand experience this is the village that she comes from we want to talk about where the matriarchal societies existed or if they didn't exist when they exist right now they're existing right now okay and am i saying we need to be in a matriarchal society i'm just showing y'all how men are in a different society and then you can judge and you can figure out that's why it's good to educate yourself and read right it says in the village once a year men uh who have gone through initiation together meet at the same spot where they were initiated and have a ritual that looks something like mothering their behavior is a kind of strict male-to-male -male emotional exchange there's something about it that breaks down the narcissistic feeling that comes with managing responsibilities this is a part of their nature so then you have to make sure you keep it in balance with spirit because we are mind body and soul as long as we're just a mind and and in a body then we're always going to be jacked up we're mind body and soul. we're human beings we're not we're not chimpanzees we are not doberman pinchers we are human beings all of us male female whatever the fuck you want to be we're human beings if you hear me right now you're human no damn dog you got a soul in there you got a soul bitch 
Why did I have to cut y'all, cut y'all out after I just said you had a song? It says, even though it's not a funeral where men, women, and children can cry together, the men cry as much as they want. There's a need to reawaken the part of the self that is in touch with emotion, and this ritual allows them to do so without waiting until somebody dies. There is a caretaking, not prescribed, but a random caretaking that goes on. Someone, because of inner pressure of some sort, will break down and someone else will take care of him. And while taking care of him, the caretaker, too, is going to break down and someone is going to come and join them. So it becomes comes a continuous support and nurturing ritual it makes it easier for some reason when the men come back for them to stop feeling that they have to invoke some kind of control within the ritual space of intimacy in the other words when the sense of responsibility and of being a man in the community stops overwhelming someone who has participated in this ritual the circle of intimacy they create with their partner becomes closer to what spirit wants the belief is that the male tends to put on his warrior mode even in the ash circle of intimacy when that warrior self has been has not been tamed by some kind of motherly energy not outside of him a motherly energy inside of him i know that makes if there's any men watching even women watching in your male center and you and you've been programmed you already know that probably makes you uncomfortable to 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 fathom motherly energy inside of a man and him actively uh actively getting in touch with that motherly energy so he can balance himself out in order to connect with a woman how can an alpha 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 male there in alpha alpha male these the, the the type of males that they be talking what they want is another male they want you to conform to being a male this is in the religion that book revealed that to me. I'll show y'all that real quick. This just blew my mind the other day. The Gospel of Thomas. You need to understand just because uh, some of this stuff is not in the official Bible of 2024. This is what they were programming people with. This was in the Bible. Right. This was in the total Bible. They just decided to snatch it out because it's, it sounded kind of kind of wild and crazy. Now, the last part of this right and let me add this back up here the last part of this book the gospel of thomas right which you probably have not heard it blew my mind this is just some stuff i seen the other day and it was in this book the goddess mother of earth whatever you want. i always get it wrong i need to get the great cosmic mother that's why i'm just keep saying the great cosmic mother she broke this down let me make sure y'all seeing what i'm seeing y'all not y'all are not seeing what i'm seeing this blew my mind right because you have to understand this is what they were teaching people in this conversation right now thomas is documenting a conversation Jesus is having about getting into the kingdom of heaven. And I'm going a, I'm to a drink some water before I read this because it it, it, it it took me. I was just like, what? If you look at 113, we can start there. Well, we can, I mean, it's just basically 114. Simon Peter said to them, make Mary leave us, for females don't deserve life. Do you hear what I just said? It says, make Mary leave us, for females don't deserve life. Then Jesus said, look, I will guide her to make her male. Did, did you hear what I just said? He said, I will guide her to make her male so that she too may become a living spirit resembling you males. For every female who makes herself male will enter the domain of heaven. That blew my entire mind. 
this was in the Bible that they were preaching on. And what does that basically mean in our society? You can it you could leave it up to interpretation, but it seems like it's very clear. Females just don't deserve life. You cannot you're not allowed to be in your female state. They want to talk about how masculine women are. Oh, they're too masculine, they're too masculine, da, 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 da. but 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 you you don't want women in their feminine energy because women in their feminine energy is empowered. They're intuitive. They know exactly when you're lying and they're gonna call your ass out on it. Or you're not gonna be able to let stuff's not gonna slide. Right? They're empowered. They are the mother. They are the original. You come from them. You come from their flesh. Right? Empower women know that. Understand that. Understand where they are in as far as value in the world. Right? So then it talks about how women harmonize themselves. It says, in the village, in order for the feminine and the masculine energies to live harmoniously, women and men must commit themselves to work balancing their sexual energies not women becoming male <coughs> and male becoming more male male on top of male 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 but in the village in order for the feminine and the masculine energies to live harmoniously women and men must commit themselves to work at balancing their sexual energies when either energy dominates it becomes overpowering and can threaten the stability of the village of the village do they care about the relationship yes they care about the relationship because of what it does for the village the reason why a lot of families don't care about they don't really care about the relationships is because you have single family units where you're competing with each other and they're already toxic internally you have so many uh skeletons in the closet because you can hide you can just close the front door lock it lock the front door, lock the back door, and nobody knows what's going on in the house. And if you dare go out there and tell people, you're going to feel shame because you're competing. You're in competition. You can't let the competition know that, right? Or you don't want people to know that you're in a vulnerable state. You don't want them to uh, get consequences. You don't want to interfere. You don't know how to just go back and forth. But when the relationship is in trouble, when that affects the whole village, when you're moving in a village mentality, then the whole paradigm shifts. It says, for this reason, women not only gather up on a yearly basis with their initiation sisters, but they also get together as often as they can and go to a cave or go to the bush. There, we do a set of rituals in order to build our masculine energy by acting out our rage and anger and by taking on men's roles. Then we go hunting, even though killing is not the emphasis of the ritual be because women usually do not kill in the village. It allows women to be outwardly. This is usually followed by the warrior's dance that young men learn while being initiated into manhood. All women dress like men throughout the duration of the ritual. Some women wear beards and mustaches. Usually there is a puree. The female father is there and she will ensure that the masculine energy is being built. If you did not know her for her beforehand, you would think that she was a man. The tone of her voice, the look of her eyes and everything else about her carries masculine energy. One by one, the women go to her and they do all these different rituals. Okay. And this is an indigenous african culture it says we accept the tradition that women must work with women in order to build a feminine identity and that men must work with men in order to build a masculine identity this way when a man and woman come together they are better able to relate to each other this is something that um prince Zella, the queen maker has been saying and I feel like it's important to know that this has already been done successfully in indigenous ancient times for thousands and thousands of years. And it's still happening in the indigenous cultures to this day. There is something in the indigenous world that compels gender groups to get together in order to work certain things out. I see similar practices in the West in what is called feminism in the men's movement. These are ways for women and men to be 
to better their relationships, not only with their gender, but also with the other sex. You will notice in many villages in Africa that during the days women are all together, men are all together also. This is not a sexist practice. It's just that for some reason there is a feeling that a clear sense of otherness is essential to a harmonious coming together with your mate. Today, we are not called upon to wage war with the opposite gender. We need to embrace the new millennium with a brand new eye, a new heart, one that allows for mutual respect. Women and men live their own mysteries and neither gender will ever fully grasp the other. The motto of the village is there is not uh, is there not to encourage sexism, nor to make men and women the same, but to create an environment in which both genders appreciate and honor the other. And with that, I'm done with this conversation. If y'all want to come on here talking about this silly ass statistic, I'm tired. I'm ready to go to bed. Okay. Um, and I'm just kind of, I'm, 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 I'm ready to go. I'm done. But yeah, women, they need to be around each other. They need to be supported by each other. Men need to be around each other. They need to be fighting each other instead of fighting the women and children inside the house, stuck inside the house, locked inside the house. You need to be out in the boxing ring somewhere. You need to go somewhere. You need to, you need to go, you need to go. Right? Women need to spend time with women. Men need to spend time with men. And it's best if you have a village mindset and you have people in your family, both men and women from both sides of the family, that are frequently coming throughout the house to make sure there's balance in the house, especially if it's a man and a woman and some children together because they are vulnerable. That's just what it is. You need to understand the differences between the men and the women instead of pretending like we're all the same. We all have the same psychology. And we don't. All right. Like, subscribe, comment. I'll see y'all in the next video. I'm out.